Okay. Today we'll see food worn as clothes. Yep. Oops. Yeah. Okay, good. What's this? Oh, what's and up? we'll oh. visit the world's smallest museum. Okay, or cut it, or cut her up, cut her up, cut her up, pull it away. Okay, and uh, oh, there's a tea. We'll show you how not to shop for clothes. Okay, we need to color that in there. And we'll help hurry up a haircut. Oh, broken pencil, but it's okay. One more, and yeah, ta-da. It's out of control. And now, the best-dressed man in America, the guy with the pointiest shoes and the skinniest ties, the guy who keeps his collar turned up, even indoors, Dave Coulier. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Out of Control, the only show on television that doesn't need suspenders. <laughs> Here's a special bulletin. Out of Control host and all-around bad dresser Dave Coulier is about to receive a memo from the big boss in New York saying that he has to spruce up his image. It's from the big boss. It says I don't look snazzy enough. Snazzy? What's snazzy? Oh, Dave, I just saw the special bulletin. You must feel awful. What's wrong with the way I dress? Well, now, if I were to dress you, I think I might, uh... Oh, I got it. Just hold on. All right, let me find something just ideal for a guy like you. Oh, here it is. This is perfect. You know, sort of the young, upperly mobile, professional, post-prep, conservative hip. Perfect. I, I just don't think it's me, Angela. Oh, sure. Well, while I check this out and try it on and stuff, why don't you watch this? Oh, Dave, you look tremendous in it. I could just see you walking down Wall Street. I don't work on Wall Street. Thank you. Edible fashions from all over the world grace our stage today, and our hungry models have agreed to postpone lunch so we can feast our eyes on clothing that does much, much more than just hang there. Say hello to Bob. Dressed for success in a formal yet comfortable pizza collar shirt, embraced by a garlic vest that acts as cologne as well as keeps the vampires away. His marshmallow shorts are held in place by a hot dog belt. When a more formal look is called for, Bob will keep the doctor away with these apple-tipped shoes. And the whole affair is topped by a cookie cap. Thanks, Bob. And now, welcome, please, Tammy, gracing our stage and telling us I'm out of tea time. Tammy's dress is an afternoon pick-me-up, complete with herbal teas, as well as the caffeinated kind that make you nervous. And we're getting nervous just looking at her hot chili jewelry that are really, really hot. If iced tea is what we need, then Tammy's right in tune with her lemon wedge eyebrows that can provide that tangy, lemony taste. Ketchup and avocado paste nail polish complement Brussels sprout earrings that seem to shout, soups on! And to peak such perfection, she's sporting an asparagus hat. Thanks, Tammy. And lastly, Joe! Joe with his tropical banana peel jacket, accented by peanut striped pants. Mmm, -hmm. the combo seem lip smacking good. And to wash the sticky peanut butter out of our mouths, we'll sample these watermelon slip ons. Perfect for casual wear. His Hawaiian bread hat is perfect for just loafing around. Thanks, Joe. So there you have it. From edible underwear to chewy dresses to crunchy sport coats, the fashion industry has taken a giant leap forward from the clothing store to the supermarket. Quite a tasteful show, don't you think? <laughs> I do. I gotta get a new tailor. These sleeves are too long. Well, let me fix that for you. Not bad, not bad. Now, can you give me some pleats on my pants? Uh. Oh, Dave, come on out. Now, don't be shy. I know you'll look great. I don't know, Angela. This mm. stuff just doesn't feel like me. It feels like somebody starts my underwear or something. I think you look very nouveau chichi. After all, that is the proper way for a man of your position to dress. Well, 
happened is I've been reconsidering my image from a business standpoint. And after much careful examination, I've oh, concluded Dave, that... Oh, Dave, Dave, I've got to change your image, and fast. Hmm. Here, try this on. It's you. Diz, what do they mean when they say, it's you? When people say it's you, that means that it's you, it's there, it's you, it's life, it's happening, it's now, it's, it's colors, it's gaudiness, it's glamour, it's glitter, it's excellent, wild, exciting glamour, and gaudiness, and, and, um, Dead. psycho blue nail. Cut it out. Wow, Dave, you look excellent. <gasps> you look like the bond of the 80s. Yes, I, I feel like a... Like a Diz, I squeak. Maybe you just need a little bit of oil. Hey. Whew, you think the inside of a shoe smells bad. All right, Diz, all right, that's enough. I, I think I just have to stretch this stuff out a little bit. What's wrong? Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing at all. Well, wait a minute. Let me see. What, what the heck is the matter, uh, Nothing. I'll, I'll, I'll just be back here. where you're going. You know, you should let me pick out your clothes for you more often. As a matter of fact, gang, I should pick out everybody's clothes in the whole wide world. Hey, if you would like your very own personalized shopping guide on how to pick out your own disaster designs, watch this. shopping spree. Come on, I'll show you where I get all my excellent Diz after designs. Now, this place is really excellent, and this is the place where I always buy my hats and bags. Oh, look at that excellent outfit. You see, when I grow up, I would love to be a famous fashion model someday. Look at that style. What grace. Now, gang, always make sure that your clothes are in season. See, I always buy my clothes by the pound, and when I don't feel like wearing, I can just juggle like this. Oh, oh, ah! <laughs> Now, gang, this is one of my excellent little hiding spots far, far away in the hills where I buy all my clothes. A very important tip, gang, is to make sure that all your clothes match. Oh, now, gang, always make sure you bring a friend with you when you're going shopping. Ah! Ooh, got a flipper wig over this outfit. Now, gang, always dress for the one you love. Here's my boyfriend right here, and I'm showing him my excellent outfit. Oh, look at him. He's so shy. He just doesn't know what to say about all the clothes I wear. Now, gang, when I go shopping, I like to try on all the clothes and drive the salespeople really crazy. Look at this outfit I'm wearing. I mean, I drive them crazy until they tell me to beat it. Now, remember, gang, always make sure you buy clothes that fit. Look at this outfit. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, I just love it. Oh, yikes, they're trying to close the store. What am I going to do? Oh, yikes. Diz, will you get out of the store? The store is closing. Oh, wait, let me just try another little outfit. Please, please. Diz, get out of the store. Money? Um, yikes. I didn't bring any money with me. Oh, oh yikes, gang. What am I going to do? I... I I really want these clothes. These are my excellent, famous designer clothes. Oh, please, please. I mean, oh, stop taking my pictures. I'm very upset. Oh, yikes, gang. What am I going to do? I don't have any money, but I really want to look close. Oh, yikes. There must be some way I could pay for these clothes. <laughs> Why, I ought to murder Elijah. Ah, oh, Dave, you're gonna look great. Trust me. Here, try this on, too. You know, the hat really makes it. I don't know, Hearn. Ah, oh, Dave, that suit has success written all over it. Yeah, I know it does, Hearn, because you wrote it there. Yeah, but it's better than what I got written on the back of mine. Oh, what is that, Hearn? Well, if I advertise for Joe, he gives me free lunches. Hey, Joe, you owe me one. <laughs> Turn around, Hearn. Oh, Dave, you're dressed for success. You know, Someday, people are going to pay big money to own your clothes. In fact, I brought a guest into the studio today who collects the clothing of stars. Mm -hmm. Come on in here, George. Let's have a big welcome for George Swine.
Thank you, thank you. And I mean that in a very positive way. <laughs> so you have the world's largest collection of clothing worn by the stars? That's right. You guys twins? No. no. Hmm. Can you show us the really neat stuff? The stuff you don't normally show to normal people. You mean the really, 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 really great stuff? Yeah. Sure. Matter of fact, right here, this is the pride of my collection. This is the sweatshirt worn by John Travolta during that movie he was making, you know... That uh, movie he was making? Did you see it? Which one? Oh, I don't know. I didn't see it either. But this is the one he wore during the dance rehearsals to keep the sweat off his body. Don't ask me how I got it. You stole it. I did not. I bought it. How much you pay for it? It's cheap. How much? Free. That's cheap. Then you stole it. You guessing or you know something? Now, right here, this is the pride of my collection. Right here. I don't know where the other glove is. Are you... No, maybe there was always only one glove. Yeah, that's it. There was always only one glove because this is the glove of Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Wow. How'd you know? Just a lucky guess. Oh, now, this isn't the one he's wearing now. This is the original one. Something that made his hand sweat, so he had to get rid of it. So well, I acquired the... then what's this? Huh? Hey, that looks just like the other glove. Well, that glove belongs to Michael Jackson's gardener. Oh, can that man dance? Hmm. Well, there's a lot of these things around now. It's amazing. Matter of fact, if you ever brought your cameras down to my garage, I could show... Hold it! I got something to show you! Herman, this guy's a joke. What do you mean, joke? Look at all the really neat clothes he has. Mr. T's chains. Now, these aren't the ones he's wearing on TV now, because those... See, these are afraid... He was afraid they were going to get tarnished by the harsh TV lighting, so he gave them to me for safekeeping in my museum. Hey, how about turning down the lights here? Show a little respect. Look at this rubber thing. It's an inner tube. Dave, will you please stop trying to ruin this story? I'm not trying to ruin this story, Hearn. I just don't think this stuff is the stuff he says it is. Hey, I heard that. Oh, I suppose this isn't the uh, belt that Rocky wore, is it? Oh, and I suppose it is. This is the one he wore when he was uh, hitting the meat. That was my favorite part. I love the sound of a man socking beef. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Well, wait a minute. No, I also thank you. have here, I got the Smurfs laundry. Uh, no, thanks. Thanks. What about, I can show you Yoda's Bermuda shorts. Thank you. Uh, thank you. How about thank my Bernie Shirley's bowling underwear? Oh, forget about that. Let's take a look at the clothing of the cars. First, you got your shoehorn for people who complain about their feet. For a hot day, why not try a bug bonnet? For you surfers, how about a bikini mobile? Or maybe a Koga truck? If you're into the macho kind of thing, there's always your tank top. Oh, boy, am I good. Wasn't that a great story, Dave? Fern, what do you know about clothes? Look at the way you dress. What's wrong with the way I dress? You know, the Burfords have dressed like this for years. My mother dresses like this. My mother's mother gave my mother this coat before she gave it to me. And I'm going to give it to my mother so she can give it to her mother. Don't worry. Out of Control will be right back after these messages. Waldo, over here. Oh, Dave. Well, what are you doing back there? <gasps> You're naked! Shh! Don't tell everybody. Now get me some clothes, quick. Why, why don't you have any clothes on, Dave? Well, because I made fun of the way Hearn dressed, and he took his suit back, and he left me stranded here. Well, uh, I, I've got some clothes you can wear. Don't, don't go away. I'll, I'll be right back. Oh, no. Dave? Oh, Dave? Dave? Well, where is he? He was here just a minute ago. Oh, you know, I really like this screen. It would look so nice in my office. Hmm, on second thought, maybe I'll just have Waldo pick it up later. Hey, Dave! Dave! This is embarrassing. Mortifying. Humiliating. I wish I was two inches tall. And if I was, I know exactly where I'd hide. Watch this. 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. If one of those bottles would happen to fall, there'd be 98 bottles of beer on the Honey, wall. Honey, keep the kids quiet in the back seat. I'm driving. Are we there yet? Hi there. I'm here at the Miniature Museum of Kansas City. There's all kinds of antique toys here and small-scale miniatures made to exact size. Some of the pieces in this collection date back as far as the early 19th century. And although a lot of the miniatures are pretty small, the museum is awfully big and there's a lot of stuff to see here. So let's get going. 
Come on with me. Let's check it out. George! Hmm, what's for dinner, my dear? A whole grain of rice! Oh, no, I missed my train. Did you look under the bed? Mm. These are some antique banks here at the museum. This is how kids used to save their money, put them in different banks like this one, the Trick Dog Bank. Go on, jump through the hoop. Go on, jump. I'll give you a nickel. Good boy. <laughs> this is the Humpty Dumpty Circuit. It was made in Germany around the turn of the century. Nein? Speaking? Well, this is a miniature. <laughs> These instruments are actually strung with human hair. See, and you can use a dandruff flake as a pick. Gee, you can't sweep much under this rug. Hey, look, you could even write a short story here. If you look real closely at this jar, you'll notice there's a little bedroom in here. Here, take a close look. <laughs> miniature? This house is as big as I am. Hey, you want to go inside? Okay. All right, let's go inside. Honey? Honey, I'm home. Honey? Honey, have you seen my son? Oh, there you are. Honey? Honey? I want my son, honey. Honey? Oh, gee, this house looks pretty scary. Ooh, boy. Whoa, it is really scary. Oh, let me up. Whoa. I don't know how I got myself into this. I'll see you back at the studio. Whoa! This is a miniature museum. And this is a miniature museum. Now this is really a miniature museum. Gee, Waldo, it was real swell of you to lend me these clothes. Dave, it is your lucky day. I mean, I, I just happened to pick up my best suit of clothes from the cleaners and, well, I'm just happy to loan them to you. Yeah, it's a great looking, what? uh... Pirate outfit. You belong to some kind of secret society or something, Waldo? You look terrific. I bet this is exactly what the big boss had in mind for you to snazz up your image. Hades hair! Hades hair! Hades hair! Who's, Who's here? That fabulous clothing designer who the big boss sent over to have you change your whole image. And guess who it is, gang? It's that fabulous and excellent clothing designer who does all the famous Hollywood movie stars and celebrities' clothes, Mr. Abe St. Bernard himself, bloody dog. I gotta get out of here. No, you can't. You've got to introduce the next segment, Dave. Yes? Oh, oh. I got a letter here from Kim Kona Coffee in Honolulu, Hawaii, who wants us to help him hurry up his haircut. So, Kim, this hurry up is for you. <gasps> Quick, Dave, here he comes! This is gonna be a close shave. <laughs> hey, Kim, is it time for a hurry up? Uh, thanks. I look much better now. Hmm. Hmm. Dave, I think you are moving in the right direction, but this pirate outfit is a bit much. Hmm? No, no, Mr. St. Bernard, you don't understand. You see, this isn't my outfit. I just borrowed these clothes because I was trapped behind the screen. And... Dave, you do not need to explain to me. I have special techniques for determining the appropriate clothing for my clients. 
special techniques, if you will walk this way. Hey, pretty amazing technique, Mr. St. Bernard, but don't you think I ought to wear something a little more formal on the show? I'm sorry, the military just isn't for me. I'm not military material. Hey, come on, quit horsing around. <laughs> this ain't me. Oh, Mr. St. Bernard, come on, cut it out. Uh, Mr. St. Bernard, this outfit is real nice, but I'm a little chilly. <laughs> Thank you. You'll bear all to the midnight sun with this polar bear kini. Or shade yourself, like our friend here, with this serpent sombrero. Your head in the clouds? Keep your feet dry with giraffe galoshes. Every party animal will be a howling success in this monkey suit. And enchanting in this pink elephant evening gown. People? People? Everyone? Your attention, please. I would like to unveil my latest creation, the best dressed man in America. The host of your show, Dave Coulier. That's the same outfit he was wearing at the start of the show. It's not the clothes, it's the person who wears them. What Dave says is correct, and he looks fabulous. But the rest of you, you look disgusting. I'm ordering new wardrobes for everyone. Oh, no, no, no. My family's dressed like this for years. The big boss said. And now, starting off wearing one of Eve's marvelous creations is the stunning Angela Quickly. Yes, Angela is wearing basic punk with orange hair. Your friends will say, orange you glad you wore this when you step out in punk. Thank you, Angela. Next is Waldo. Why be a Waldo flower when you can wear this? Waldo looks ready to take off with this twirling tie propeller outfit. Thank you, Waldo. Next is Diz. You'll say, why wear other clothes when you can wear none? Basic black and white, a Diz for all seasons. <laughs> Thank you, Diz. Next, it's Hearn. I'm not coming out. I'm not coming out unless I have my hat. Yes, his or Hearn. You'll have them dressing with this beautiful outfit. With matching press hat to impress your friends. I feel like an idiot. Ah, now this is fashion. Well, that's our show for today. Join us for our next show when we see a guy who can actually make candles out of earwax, and then we find another man who actually swallowed his television set while it was still on. So see you next time, everybody. <laughs> Pull that down, okay. T, T. F. Today we'll visit.